Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and as calving season approaches in the Newford herd, I'm joined by Newford farm technician Michael Fagan to get an insight into the preparation and advance of calving and a review of the performance of the herd in 2021. You're very welcome, Michael. You have a very busy few weeks ahead in Newford. We're getting ready here on the farm at the moment now. All the cows themselves are all nearly mature in the herd that we have at Aberdeen and Angus and Hereford Cross, who are first cross from the dairy herd. We have 76 cows and 17 heifers to calve down this year, so that's a total of 93 animals. And all our cows, they're all in calf to um, five-star terminal bulls, which has a greater than 70% reliability calving difficulty. As what calving this year, it'll, it'll last roughly 10 weeks and we'll start at the end of the month, first of February. So as we stand at the moment, we're on standby because the first calf could arrive at any time. But the end of the month will be our, is our kickoff period. And what's the management of those cows at the moment, Michael? Yeah, the, so the cows themselves, Catherine, they're all, they're getting round bales of silage ranging from 66 to 68 DMD. It's more quantity rather than quality for those, for the cows themselves. And the real heavy cows, so not with a good body score condition, I'm talking about the cows really from three and three quarters to four plus, where we are ha- restricting their silage at the moment. That means we're just probably giving them silage this morning and we'll be slow and pushing it in at the evenings because they have plenty of fat on them at the moment. All the cows were themselves were body scored there in mid-November and pinned accordingly to their condition score. So I'd say looking at going through the pens there, there today, the average body score of the herd at the moment is in around two and three quarters, maybe three and, three and a quarter. So they're in fair, fair condition. The, the good autumn this year uh, has paid off on them. Now, when we did pin score them, there was nine cows who had a very low body score. And I'm talking about maybe someplace from one and a quarter up to one and a half. So those cows were pulled out and we put them into a pen on their own. And we ended up giving them two kilos of side holds to build up their body reserve for about five weeks. And we stopped that there in there around early January. So at that time, too, those cows received good quality pit silage of 70, 72 DMD. But now they're back in their own bales of silage there again with a lower DMD now because some of them are up again calving at the moment. And I suppose by, I can't stress really heavily enough how important it is to body score your cows because it does give you a good indication. And it's not alone does it give you a good indication, but it also sets you up for the, for the breeding season come next year. Because an example of those nine cows, if we hadn't pulled them out and hadn't given them the bit of feeding, and when they'd calved down, they would have been really very thin and it would have taken them ages to go back and calf. So I have to say body score on the cows is a very key thing and, and it's an ideal time to, to get it done to give you an indication what your herd is doing. Most definitely, Michael, it's very important. And what is the herd health management of the cows? Yeah, so at the moment, oh, I suppose the key thing is they're all getting 100 gram pre calf minerals, the cows themselves, and that's just poured on top of the silage every morning. And that started there on the 1st of December and that'll keep going until they calve it down. All the cows themselves have been treated for fluke and lice, and we treated them later this year compared to any other year because the autumn was so good. That, uh, we didn't really bring in the cows until about the 5th or 10th of November. So we just had to wait for the eggs to hatch out from the fluke. So we did them with level fast diamond there in early January. And another key thing that we're doing at the moment is, we, we're, which we've been doing for every year, we're spreading lime on the slats and just really does help to control any bugs or bacteria that may build up. And not alone that, but it also keeps the cows udder and tits clean while they're on the slats at the moment. And mentioning lime, lime is something that we use pre-calving and after calving, even when the calves have calved down or cows have calved down, on the straw bed, we would douse, douse down all the straw bedding too with lime, and it does prevent any bacteria or scours be, building up. I suppose the other big thing that was done with the cows there lately, all the cows have received a Rotovac uh, injection there the other day, who are calving from now to St. Patrick's Day, and the later cows will receive their vaccination from the 14th of February. And I believe that has to be three weeks in their, in their system. So that was just done there nearly January. So just going to cut in now once to start calving down. I suppose in Newford, Michael, you're also calving the heifers at 24 months. Mm. How are they going to be managed pre-calving? Yeah, there are 17 heifers in calf this year. They actually happen to be mainly heifer cross heifers from the dairy herd. They will be calving down at 24 months of age. And just to give you an idea, I suppose their body score is roughly about three and a quarter at the moment. And they're roughly about 580 kilos, give or take. Now, all those heifers that are in calf to Edendale Ivor, who has a 5.8 calving difficulty. And this is a bull that has worked very well for our heifers over the previous year. So 
I don't I expect no really major difficulty with them there. I suppose the big thing we had to watch out there, the war laying down a lot of like a lot of fat cover there in early December. So we did reduce their the quality of silage they were getting to a much lower DMD to to resist I suppose difficult calving. But other than that, they should calve down without any, any difficulty. I suppose the fact you're using high reliable AI sires is a huge benefit, especially for the heifers calving at two years. Yeah, and that's something that we do at the breeding season. We just put in a, a criteria that we need to, re to reduce the calving difficulty and it works every year. And I suppose as, as we go through the steps to this, when the cow starts calving down, we were never supposed to, the key thing is we would never rush a cow or a heifer at calving. We would give them plenty of, plenty of time, as much time as possible. And we try to avoid as much handling as possible. And I suppose on previous years, we had 85 to 90% of the herd that would calve down on their own and about roughly 8% of the herd would require, require some form of assistance. And I would say that 8%, that's just, just really made up maybe sometimes where you have a foot down or maybe a head back, or I suppose the other coming back with, but nine times out of 10, the majority of the cows will calve down their down themselves. And that really goes back to what you said there about the selection of the bulls. The easy calving goes back to the selection on the ICBF system when we, when we during the breeding season there started in April. Doing the body condition score on the cows, that's making sure any of the fat cows that we put good body condition that reduce, reduce their silage in the 10 cows that we'd give them a bit of meal. And I also find with those early maturing herds, the Angus or the Herefords, they really kind of open themselves up really, really well when it comes to calving and reduces any difficulty. And I suppose like I, we do have a camera there on this in the calving shed itself and it's linked to our phones and that's a great access, access to have on the farm and if, if a person could have it, it's really great. And I suppose there in the corner of the shed there, we've also set up there is the, the calving table there at the top corner of the shed, which is all the calving equipment, such as the calving jack, the ropes, the disinfectant, the corn book and the red, the red lamp, the really key things that you need. And I suppose the other big thing that we do need or we have is the foot bats at all the sheds no matter what shed it is from the cows calving down to the cows that have calved down i would strongly recommend a foot bat foot bat at there at all entrances because it does could reduce any bacteria from spread from one shed to the other shed and i suppose just going back there to one thing that you just mentioned you asked me about the heifers calving down in fairness the majority of our heifers will calve down themselves. They are in calf to Edendale Ivor and we have used him down through previous years and he's worked well with us. And in fairness to him, his calves really are born around 28 to 29, 30 kilos. So which are a handing up calf. So I don't expect any hassle from our in calf heifers to calve down from that bull. And Michael, now in advance of calving, are there, what are the other things you're doing in order to prepare? I suppose the, all the sheds have been washed and disinfectant. We have some colostrums there in the freezer ready to go. And later on this week, we'll probably meet our vet for just a quick chat regarding calving. And if there's any new treatments or drugs on the market that we that would give us help us towards ease of calving, we'll, we'll take advantage of it. The farm itself, we will have a student on the farm to give us a hand at calving at night time. And as I said to you, as at the moment, a calf could come at any time. So all hands are on deck at the moment. We're checking the cows night and evening now because the calf could come at any time and at scanning time there was no cow scanned with twins but as the ad says you just never know you have to be on your guard because a cow could could have a set of time twins so we just need to be unprepared for that most definitely mike and i suppose moving on how have last year's heifers and bullocks performed over the winter yeah the, the newford yearly and heifers they were housed on the 7th december and due to the good backing of of the autumn, we were able to keep them out till then. They were housed at 379 kilos, Catherine. And there on last Thursday, the 20th of January, we did something which was we haven't done before in the seven years of Newford. We actually let them back out to grass after a 45 days housing period. So they went back to grass there at 411 kilos and they've done an average daily gain from birth to turnout of 1.112 a kilo per day. But over the 45 days of the housing period, they achieved an average daily gain of 0.72 of a kilo. Now, they were on two kilos of an 18% protein ration and good quality pit silage with 72% DMD. Our aim of these efforts is to try and finish them off grass as much as possible between 16 to 18 months. We're trying to aim for as much as possible towards 16, aiming for a minimum live weight of 555 kilos at a 52% kill out. Now, if we could achieve this, Earlier finishing for these heifers would reduce our stocking rate on the farm in the second half of the year, and it would also reduce the pressure of fertilizer usage 
and any other associated costs that we may have in the second half of the year. And it also play a part in reducing our carbon footprint on the farm. Our male weanlands, we actually weighed them on the 6th of January and they were 396 kilos and they're actually thriving very well. They had a, achieved an average daily gain since housing of 0.67 of a kilo and housing was on the 18th of November for them. And just to point out there, between the 13th of December to the 6th of January, their average daily gain for that period was 0.92 of a kilo, which is very exceptionally thrive for them at that period. They're also like the heifers, they're on two kilos of concentrates of 18% protein, and they're on 75% DMD bale silage. That's great performance, Michael. And for steers that you had finished just there before Christmas, how did they perform or how are they compared to other years? Yeah, there was 38 steers or the 2020 progeny born animals. Nine of them were finished off grass with meals and the rest were finished indoors. So just to give you an idea, on average, each bullock that was slaughtered consumed roughly 92 euros worth of meal or equivalent of 296 kilos of a 12% protein ration. The 38 bullocks between them, they degraded R equals three minus. And their average live weight at draft and going up the ramp of the lorry was 663 kilos. They had a carcass weight of 357 kilos and a kill out of 54%. And their average daily or their average age was 21 months of age and the price per kilo we got was four euros and 51 cents and that was made up of the base payment the qps and the grid payment and if, if i was to give you an idea just to compare that to the 2020 animals that were sold we got three euros 96 so that was a difference of 55 percent more 55 percent per kilo more in 2021 and the sale price in 2021 was 1611 euros per bullock and that was 222 euros more per bullock as compared to the bullock sale price drafted in 2020. That's a big difference in the price. And was there a similar situation for the heifers? Yeah, there were, uh, there was 56 heifers. And like the bullocks were all the 2020 born progeny, 38 of them were finished off grass with meals and the rest were finished indoors. And on average, each heifer that was slaughtered consumed 83 euros worth of meal or roughly 270 kilos of 12% protein ration. And like the bullocks, they graded actually R equals three minus as well. And they were drafted at 583 kilos. They had a carcass weight of 311 and that was well up on compared to previous carcass years that we had in Newford. And they had an average of 53% kill out at 20 months of age. And their price per kilo for, for 2021 was four euros and 49 cents. And that like the bullocks was made up the base payment, QPS and the grid payment. When I compare that to the 2020 heifers that were sold, they made three euros and 97 cents per kilo. That's a difference of 52 cents per kilo. So that the sale price in 2021 for the heifers was 1,396, which was 208 euros more per heifer compared to the heifer sale price that was drafted in 2020. So I suppose on, on reflection, the beef price in 2021 was, was much more better in, than 2020. That's a big price difference, Michael. And was there a similar difference for the heifers? That's right. Yeah, they're, they're getting on well at the moment. They went out the 20th of March. Look, at it, it's nine, nine degrees down here at the moment. The weather is really suiting us. They're well settled now at the moment. We're doing back fencing. We're probably walking around an acre a day for them. If they're going to a little bit, a paddock's a little bit heavier, we'll reduce, reduce the, the, the fence with them but they are well settled. And the way I'm looking at it at the moment is if we can keep them out, they'll be well well adjusted to move on to try and get them gone at 16 months of age. As I said, they're in Garton Hound. We'll probably get about three weeks down here in this farm. And from there, then we'll go up to Cohen's farm and we'll do the same practice there again, move them on, back fence them. And as they graze each paddock up there, we'll probably follow that with, with slurry then. So hopefully we'll have a, an, an exciting story to tell as the year progresses on those heifers to try and get them gone at 16, 17 months of age. Thanks very much, Michael, and the best luck with the calving season. We look forward to hearing how it all goes. Thank you, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode. And my thanks to Michael for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie. Or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our beef program, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.